Bill Clinton. He's the guy they call the comeback kid. Born William Jefferson Blythe III in 1946, Clinton's story is one for the history books. From humble beginnings in Arkansas to the Oval Office, his life has been a roller coaster of triumphs and scandals. Clinton's journey is a testament to the power of perseverance. No matter the odds, he always found a way to bounce back. He connected with people on a personal level, making them believe in his vision for America. Buckle up, because this is going to be a wild ride. Clinton's story is intricately woven with America's story. He came of age during the turbulent 60s, a time of social upheaval and cultural revolution. These formative years shaped his worldview, instilling in him a deep belief in the power of dialogue and diplomacy. Fast forward to the 1990s, a decade defined by globalization and technological advancements. Enter Bill Clinton, a youthful and charismatic governor from Arkansas, promising hope and change. His message resonated with a nation hungry for a new direction. Clinton's presidency, spanning from 1993 to 2001, became synonymous with economic prosperity and social progress, but it wouldn't be without its share of controversy. The Clinton years were a time of immense change. The internet was revolutionizing communication. The economy was booming, fueled by technological innovation. Clinton embraced technology, championed free trade, and ushered in an era of unprecedented economic growth. His policies aimed to bridge the gap between Democrats and Republicans, but amidst this progress, scandal lurked. Clinton's personal life became entangled with his presidency, leading to impeachment proceedings. Yet through it all, Clinton persevered. His ability to connect with people, cementing his place in history. Imagine a young Bill Clinton roaming the streets of Hope, Arkansas. Born William Jefferson Blythe III in 1946, Clinton never knew his biological father. His dad, a traveling salesman, died in a car crash before his birth. His mum, Virginia, remarried when Bill was four. Enter Roger Clinton, who introduced complexity to his childhood. Alcoholism cast a shadow over the Clinton household, but young Bill persevered discovering a love for reading and music. He excelled in school, demonstrating a sharp intellect and natural charisma. This early period instilled in Clinton a resilience and drive to overcome adversity. High school became Clinton's proving ground. At Hot Springs High School, he was a star in student government, debate team and band. One defining moment, Meeting President John F. Kennedy in 1963, it ignited a passion for public service that would shape his destiny. Clinton's teenage years weren't all about politics. He enjoyed typical teenage fun. He honed his ability to connect with people from all walks of life. These experiences helped him develop the empathy and understanding that would later define his political persona. College was Clinton's next adventure. Georgetown University became his new stomping ground. He studied international affairs, immersing himself in global politics. Clinton wasn't just hitting the books, he was organizing protests and interning for senators. He snagged a Rhodes Scholarship and headed to Oxford University. Oxford exposed Clinton to new perspectives, broadening his horizons. He debated philosophy, explored European culture, and perhaps indulged in a pint or two. These experiences further shaped his understanding of the world. Returning to the States, Clinton landed at Yale Law School. This is where he met Hillary Rodham, a brilliant and ambitious law student. Law school was more than just textbooks for Clinton. It was where he honed his debating skills and legal mind. Amidst the academic rigor, love blossomed. Bill and Hillary's relationship wasn't your average college romance, they were intellectual equals. They shared a passion for social justice, working together on legal aid projects. Yale Law School was about finding his soulmate who would shape his journey. Yale Law was great, but Clinton felt the pull of his home state. 
1973, he landed back in Arkansas, teaching law at the University of Arkansas. Law professor by day, political animal by night, Clinton was already making moves. In 1974, he ran for Congress, taking on a well-established Republican incumbent. He lost, but earned respect for his charisma and hard work. Clinton realized that connecting with people was key to winning elections. He spent the next few years building relationships across Arkansas. In 1976, he ran for Attorney General of Arkansas and won, becoming the youngest in the state's history. The victory solidified his status as a rising star in the Democratic Party. Two years as Attorney General. Check. Now it was time for the big leagues, the Arkansas governor's mansion. In 1978, at the age of 32, Bill Clinton made history, becoming the youngest governor in the United States. Being a young governor was a mixed bag. Clinton brought fresh ideas and energy, focusing on education reform and economic development, but his early years were marked by political missteps and legislative battles. Yet, Clinton learned from his mistakes, adapting his style and honing his political instincts. He never lost sight of his core values, hard work, compassion, and a belief in the power of government. What's five terms as Arkansas governor sound like? Clinton held on to that governorship for over a decade. Education became a major focus with reforms that increased teacher salaries and improved school facilities. Clinton worked tirelessly to attract new businesses to the state, creating jobs and boosting economic growth. He championed policies that supported small businesses and diversified the state's economy. Clinton fought to expand access to affordable health care, particularly for children and low-income families. These weren't just bullet points on a resume, they were tangible achievements. Clinton's record as governor served as the foundation for his presidential aspirations. His tenure was marked by both successes and setbacks. By the late 1980s, Bill Clinton was a known quantity in democratic circles. He'd served as chairman of the National Governors Association, giving him a national platform. But there was a problem, national recognition. Outside of political junkies, most Americans didn't know who Bill Clinton was. This changed in 1988 when Clinton delivered a nominating speech for Michael Dukakis at the Democratic National Convention. The speech turned into a rambling 33-minute snooze fest, but Clinton took the criticism in stride, learned from his mistakes, and vowed to do better next time. The national stage was calling, and Clinton was ready to answer. nineteen ninety two the cold war was over but a new era was dawning enter bill clinton saxophone in hand promising to be a different kind of democrat his opponent george h w bush a one-term president struggling to connect with voters after the economic recession clinton campaigned on a message of hope and change promising to create jobs invest in education and provide affordable health care he tapped into the anxieties of the time offering himself as a youthful and energetic alternative. The campaign was brutal, but Clinton emerged victorious. He won the election, ushering in a new era in American politics. Clinton's first term was a whirlwind of activity. He tackled the economy, healthcare and gun control. One of his signature achievements, the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA. Healthcare reform was another major priority, but it faced fierce opposition and ultimately failed. Despite setbacks, Clinton remained popular. He balanced the budget, signed the Family and Medical Leave Act, and appointed Ruth Bader Ginsburg to the Supreme Court. He presided over a period of economic growth and job creation, solidifying his image as a pragmatic and effective leader. Clinton's second term was overshadowed by scandal, culminating in his impeachment by the House of Representatives. It all began with allegations of sexual harassment by Paula Jones, a former Arkansas state employee. Then came the Monica Lewinsky scandal, a political sex scandal that consumed the nation. 
Clinton initially denied the allegations, famously declaring, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. But the evidence, including DNA evidence on a blue dress, proved otherwise. The scandal led to a media frenzy with every detail scrutinized and debated ad nauseum. In 1998, the House of Representatives voted to impeach Clinton on charges of perjury and obstruction of justice. The charges stemmed from his testimony about the Lewinsky affair, which a special prosecutor, Kenneth Starr, had been investigating. The Senate acquitted Clinton on both charges, allowing him to remain in office. But the scandal left a stain on his presidency, raising questions about his character and judgment. It also deepened the partisan divide in Washington, with Republicans and Democrats bitterly divided over Clinton's actions. Despite the shadow of scandal, Clinton's second term was marked by significant achievements on the domestic and international fronts. The economy continued to boom, the budget was balanced, and crime rates continued to fall. Clinton also made progress on issues like climate change and HIV AIDS. In foreign policy, Clinton focused on promoting peace and democracy around the world. He helped broker the Dayton Accords, ending the war in Bosnia. He also worked to expand NATO, bringing former Soviet bloc countries into the alliance. Clinton's efforts in the Middle East were more complicated. He hosted Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin and PLO Chairman Yasser Arafat at the White House for historic peace talks, but a lasting peace agreement remained elusive. He also ordered airstrikes against Iraq in response to Saddam Hussein's defiance of UN weapons inspectors. Despite the challenges, Clinton left office with high approval ratings, a testament to his political skills and his ability to connect with voters. He had navigated a tumultuous period in American history, leaving behind a legacy of peace, prosperity and a more inclusive America. Bill Clinton's presidency is a complex tapestry of triumphs and failures. He was a gifted politician and a flawed individual. His legacy continues to be debated, but his impact is undeniable. Clinton's presidency ushered in economic prosperity, he balanced the budget and expanded NATO. But his presidency was marked by scandal. The scandal led to his impeachment. Despite controversies, Clinton remains a popular figure. He has devoted his post-presidency to humanitarian work. Bill Clinton's story is a reminder of human complexity. Leaving the White House in 2001, Bill Clinton could have retired, but not Bill, he was only 54, full of energy. Remember, this is the guy who played sax on Arsenio Hall. So he set up shop in Harlem, New York City. Harlem wasn't a typical choice, it was about making a statement. He opened his office on 125th Street. He wanted to be accessible. Clinton quickly became a fixture in Harlem. Clinton could have spent his post-presidency writing memoirs and giving speeches for hefty fees. Sure, he did some of that, but his real passion project became the Clinton Foundation. This wasn't just another charitable foundation, it was Clinton's attempt to tackle some of the world's most pressing problems. HIV AIDS, climate change, poverty, access to healthcare. These weren't just abstract issues for Clinton, they were personal challenges that he felt compelled to address. He traveled the globe, meeting with world leaders, activists, and everyday people, seeking solutions and forging partnerships. The Clinton Foundation, under his leadership, became a force for good, raising millions of dollars to combat HIV AIDS in Africa, promote sustainable development, and improve healthcare outcomes in developing countries. It wasn't without its critics, of course. Some questioned its funding sources, others its effectiveness. But even Clinton's detractors acknowledged the Foundation's positive impact on countless lives around the world. This wasn't just about legacy building for Clinton, it was about purpose. He had a platform, a network, and a deep-seated belief in the power of collective action to make a difference. The Clinton Foundation became his way of channeling his energy, experience and influence into something bigger than himself. Being a former president comes with perks. One of them is instant global rock star status. Doors open, phones get answered, and world leaders actually listen when you talk. Clinton, with his charm, intellect, and Rolodex of contacts, 
became a sought-after elder statesman. He gave speeches, attended conferences, and met with heads of state, advocating for peace, democracy, and global cooperation. He was a vocal critic of the Iraq War, arguing that it had destabilized the Middle East and diverted resources from other pressing issues. He also spoke out against climate change, urging world leaders to take action to address this existential threat. Clinton's post-presidency wasn't about clinging to past glory. It was about leveraging his experience and influence to make a difference on the world stage. He wasn't afraid to speak truth to power, to challenge conventional wisdom and to push for solutions to complex global problems. His voice carried weight, not because he was a former president, but because he spoke with conviction, passion and a deep understanding of the issues. He became a bridge builder, a convener and a tireless advocate for a more just, equitable and sustainable world. Post-presidency also meant more time with Hillary. Their lives had always been intertwined, but now, without the constraints of the White House, their partnership took on a new dimension. They wrote books, gave joint speeches, and campaigned tirelessly for Democratic candidates. When Hillary ran for president in 2008, Bill was her most vocal supporter. He crisscrossed the country, giving speeches, attending rallies, and reminding voters why they had elected him twice. He was her secret weapon, her most trusted advisor, and her biggest cheerleader. Even after Hillary's loss to Barack Obama, the Clintons remained a force in American politics. Bill campaigned for Obama in both 2008 and 2012, using his popularity to mobilize voters, especially in key swing states. He understood the importance of party unity, of putting aside personal ambition for the greater good. Their story is one of ambition, resilience, and an enduring love story that has weathered its share of storms. They are partners in every sense of the word, supporting each other's dreams, navigating challenges together, and using their combined influence to make a difference in the world. All right, let's talk legacy. Bill Clinton, the guy who brought us the 90s, peace in the Balkans, and well, that whole Monica thing. He left office with sky-high approval ratings, but history's a harsh mistress. On one hand, the economy boomed under Clinton. Remember those budget surpluses, the Lewinsky scandal, impeachment, the constant scrutiny of his personal life? His crime bill is blamed for mass incarceration. He achieved great things while also making significant mistakes. Love him or hate him, you can't deny his impact on America. post-presidency, Clinton didn't just fade away. He threw himself into the Clinton Foundation, tackling global issues. He became a globe-trotting advocate, using his clout to broker deals and raise funds. He's comfortable on the world stage and in local communities. Whether you agree with him or not, you can't help but admire his energy and commitment So we've taken this trip through time, revisiting the highs and lows of Bill Clinton's life. From a kid in hope to the Oval Office and beyond, one thing's clear age has been a constant character in his story. Think about it, youngest governor, youngest president in decades. He brought a youthful energy to the White House, a vibrancy that resonated with the times. He played the sax on Arsenio for crying out loud. This wasn't your grandpa's president, but youth can be a double-edged sword. Critics questioned his experience, his judgment, especially when scandals erupted. Did his age make him more susceptible to certain temptations, to reckless decisions? The debate rages on. Then there's post-presidency Bill. He could have taken the easy route, enjoyed a quiet retirement. No, nope, not his style. He hit the ground running, launching a global foundation, advising world leaders, even campaigning for his wife. Age became an asset, a testament to his experience, his stamina. He was older, wiser, but still driven by that same ambition, that desire to make a mark on the world. Here's the thing about Bill Clinton. He's a survivor. He's been knocked down, dragged through the mud, impeached even, but he always bounces back, a testament to his resilience, his ability to connect with people. Even when they disagree with him, he's a walking paradox, a policy wonk 
who can charm a room, a flawed individual who achieved great things. He represents the best and worst of American politics, a reminder that our leaders are human, capable of both extraordinary vision and colossal mistakes. Love him or hate him, you can't deny his impact. He defined an era, for better or worse. His presidency was a time of peace and prosperity, but also of scandal and division. It's a legacy that continues to be debated, dissected and re-evaluated. And through it all, age has been his constant companion, shaping his journey, influencing perceptions and ultimately revealing the complexities of a man who has lived a life in the public eye, for better or worse. Bill Clinton's story isn't over yet. He's still out there speaking his mind, advocating for his causes, proving that age is just a number when you've got the drive, the charisma and maybe just a little bit of that Clinton magic.